Sixth generation fighters promised to introduce the greatest innovations of the last decades into aerial combat, laser weapons, advanced stealth, loyal wingman drones, AI. Many analysts doubted that these technologies were mature enough, but nobody doubted that some sort of sixth generation fighter would be made. Until out of the blue, the chief of the Air Force dropped a bombshell. In an interview in June 2024, General David Olvin was asked about the Air Force's upcoming sixth generation fighter project called Next Generation Air Dominance. Journalists expected a generic answer about the project progressing well, but his answer was shocking. We're looking at a lot of very difficult options that we have to consider, he replied. The remainder of the interview gave us some very useful clues as to what's caused the Air Force to rethink their 6th gen project. So let's put some meat on the bone. The Next Generation Air Dominance program was designed to create a replacement for the F-22 Raptor fleet. These remain extremely potent, but they are also aging and increasingly expensive to maintain and upgrade. Upgrading the 32 early production aircraft to the latest version will reportedly cost a massive $110 million per airframe. 35% more expensive than purchasing the current version of the F-35 rolling off the assembly line. Or put another way, upgrading all of these aircraft will cost the Air Force a Virginia-class submarine's worth of cash. When given the choice between these expensive upgrades or retiring them, the Air Force has tried to pick the latter and send these jets to the boneyard, only to be blocked by Congress. These funds, which were destined for the 6th Gen fighter project, remain locked up in a bureaucratic battle between bean counters. So, can't they find money for the program elsewhere? Well, it seems like everything the Air Force owns is in need of replacement. Their intercontinental ballistic missile, the Minuteman III, was designed in the 1960s and is in dire need of replacement. The bill for this replacement, called the Sentinel, has ballooned massively and is now approaching $150 billion. That's the entire US Air Force budget for 2022. The Strategic Bomber Force is also in need of a revamp. Their B-1B bomber fleet is so old that they are banned from flying low-level missions for fear of the thicker atmosphere stressing the aging airframes. And the mighty B-2 stealth bomber fleet has shrunk to just 19 operational aircraft. Their replacement, the B-21 Raider, has progressed smoothly, but the price for the 100 aircraft, half of what the Air Force initially recommended, will be $60 billion excluding sustainment. With billion-dollar programs and cost overruns coming out of its ass, General David Alvin has begun to wonder whether a sixth generation fighter still makes sense in the current warfighting environment. As has been seen in just two years of combat in Ukraine, war breeds rapid innovation. What was initially a battle of artillery and motorized infantry now includes aerial, naval, and even ground-based kamikaze drones. The precision-guided weapons which were at the heart of the American way of warfighting now find themselves struggling under the most intense electronic warfare efforts ever seen on the battlefield. Saab and Boeing spent a decade developing the ground-launched small-diameter bomb, only to have it fail in the heat of battle, unable to guide itself through the massed electromagnetic jamming. This is not to say that the US Air Force is shying away from the high-tech or the expensive, but they now believe that spending 25 years designing and building an aircraft is a technological gamble. Nobody can offer more than a best guess as to what the wars of the 2040s will be like. Is it in the Pacific? If so, you'll want a fat aircraft which can carry a ton of fuel. Will runways be safe? If not, you'll want to design it to be capable of using unimproved runways. Will there be laser weapons in the future? If so, how much power generation will they require? There are a million different questions which must be asked during the design phase, and the answers are at best, guesstimates. And while the US Air Force had been lacking a better alternative to this gamble, they think they've found some inspiration in their drone program. Virtually all of the new UAV programs being investigated by the Air Force have one common theme. They are iterable. Instead of designing a highly complex UAV with an endless list of requirements, capabilities, and complexities, you design it around your core requirements and make sure that it is designed so that it can be adapted in the future. While this is an understandable approach, there are some big questions. Aspects like stealth are fundamental parts of the aircraft design and can't be easily bolted on or evolved over time. So how will they address this? In truth, it's still unclear, but it could be that these future fighters will be in service for far shorter periods of time than we are accustomed to. In the words of General Alvin, maybe built to last isn't a good bumper sticker anymore because built to last assumes that it's relevant as long as it lasts. There will be lots of work behind the scenes to find out whether introducing new fighters on a more rapid basis is actually a cost-effective approach. 
But one thing working in its favor is the growing acceptance that sending $100 million fighters into the fray may be a thing of the past. Stealthy UAVs like the Kratos Valkyrie can be produced for just $2 million a piece. These are capable of conducting electronic warfare, firing air-to-air -air weapons, and acting as airborne radars. Group a few of these UAVs together, and you now have a multi-role fighter, which is both highly capable and won't break the bank if they are shot down. While they may not be fully mature right now, they almost certainly will be before the Air Force's sixth generation fighter is ready in the 2030s. In this scenario, where inexpensive UAVs are taking most of the risk, the Air Force may be wondering if investing in their UAV capabilities is a better investment than investing in a fighter which may be further away from the front line in a command and control capacity. This ties into two previous videos I made, one covering the utility of new UAVs in a war in the Pacific, and the other video discussing the massive vulnerability of US air bases and how it's pushing the Air Force to look for alternatives. Both are undoubtedly feeding into the Air Force's current calculus. We still have some months to go before more details begin trickling through, but what is clear is that for now, the US Air Force is having serious doubts about the usefulness of an expensive 6th generation fighter. If there are more updates, you can be sure to find them here. In the meanwhile, this has been Red 4, and I thank you for watching.